Hi everybody. This video is for people who are interested in learning Revit API with Python. In this tutorial, I will code one of my recent tools, copy view filters between views and view templates. I'm going to explain step by step how it all works and how to look for the right methods in Revit API documentation. And if you are not programmer, the complete tool is also available in my free EFTools extension, which you can see right there. Let's open Revit and start coding. So here's my Revit project with just a few views open. And right here on the left, you can see there is a source view with filters applied to them. And here are all the filters that we are going to copy to other views or view templates. We're gonna go to EF Tutor. I've prepared a button here, copy view filters. If you don't know how to create a button, I have a video on YouTube showing you how to create a Revit extension. And also I explain this process in my Revit API newsletter. Sign up to my newsletter if you wanna get similar updates and learn more about Revit API. So now hold Alt and click on the button and it will open a folder where it's located. And I can open the Python script and at the moment it's pretty much empty. There's some information about the name of the button and description, then I import everything from Revit database and I have a few variables that we're gonna use. But for this video we're just gonna use doc. And here in the main it's empty. So first of all we need to get all views and view templates with filters. Then we wanna let users select which source view or view template we want to use. Then instead of taking all of the available filters, we're gonna let user decide which filters to copy. Lastly, user needs to select destination views. And then our script is going to copy all of these selected filters to our destination views. At the moment these are all the steps that we want to do. So let's make some space and start with the step 1, get all views and view templates. For this I can open my PDF guide on getting elements with Revit API. There is a section about getting views and sheets. Here's the code snippet that we can use to get all views and view templates. This is gonna create filtered element collector for our project. Then we're gonna filter by category to get all the views. Then we're gonna make sure that we are getting only instances and not the types. And lastly, we're gonna convert all of this into a list of elements. In this case, list of views. Now we need to filter all the views with filters. Because when we're selecting the source view, we only wanna show our user views which have some filters applied to them. To do this, I'm gonna make very simple list comprehension and I'm gonna write, I wanna get all views for view in all views if view get filters. Let's bring Revit API documentation to see where does this come from. Then I'm gonna look for view class. I'm gonna select members because it combines both methods and properties. Then with Ctrl F, I'm gonna write filter and it's gonna highlight everything that has a word filter. For example, here is add filter. I can scroll until the next match. And here I can see there is a method called get filters and it's doing exactly what we want. And it doesn't have any arguments. We just need to call it on a view. Let's go back to the script. In my case, I'm gonna keep it all together, but if you wanna separate your views and view templates, we could also do that. And we can add here another conditional statement asking if this is a template or not a template. Let's just make print statement to make sure that we're getting the right amount of views. Then in here, we just wanna count how many there are. And let's give the right variables. Let's go to Revit, click on this button. Right here, it has printed that in this project, I have in total 263 views and view templates together. 2021 view and 42 view templates. So far it's going good. I don't need these print statements anymore. And I could comment this out because I think I'm gonna only use this one. So before we go any further, we need to make sure that we actually got some views with view filters. And to do this, we're just gonna say, if not views with filters, and then we need to stop execution of our script and give some message. To make it nicely, we can make a little pop-up that's gonna say that there are no views with filters. So please try again. Let's look in the PyRevit developer documentation. And if you're gonna scroll down, there is a section called effective input. And in here, there are different types of inputs and I'm gonna look at alerts. In my case, I just wanna have output like this one. And this is the code that we need. So I'm gonna copy this, paste it here. I don't need any of that. And this is the line that's gonna make the pop-up. And in here, you can see that it has the argument saying exit script equals true. We can move this import up. Let's change this message. So if we're gonna run this script in a project where there are no filters applied, this is the message that we're gonna see. Lastly, I'm gonna prepare a dictionary where the keys are all the view names and the values are the actual view objects. I'm gonna say dictionary views with filters. I'm also gonna use the dictionary comprehension because it's just gonna be a one-liner instead of writing all these lines and for loops. So the way it works, first we need to say the key is gonna be view name then the colon, and then I'm gonna go give a view. Then I'm gonna say for view in views with filters. And now the first step is complete. Let's just make the final print to make sure that we are getting exactly what we want here. So I'm gonna write for key and value in dictionary items. And I wanna print key and value. 
Right here it has printed our dictionary items. I can see right here there is a name of the view and then an actual object of the view. This is good. Now let's remove the print statement. Now we're going to the second step where we're gonna let users select their source view and view template. And to do this, we need to again refer to PyRevit developers documentation in effective inputs. There is actually a very simple function to select views, as you can see here, and we can even filter it. But for me, I prefer to work with dictionaries, and therefore we're gonna use the select from list. There are a few different options. We just wanna take that one. There is already given the argument multi-select. This is what we want. I'm gonna come here, paste it. We're not gonna need this part. We don't want to have name attribute argument right here. What it tells here is that when it's gonna show the list to user, it's gonna try to get names of all of the elements. I don't like to use it because if you're gonna provide types, it's gonna give you an error because you cannot get name of a type like this. Let's change the name of the button to select source view or view template. And we can rename the variable to be something like selected source view. Now we need to provide some list of elements. For this we're gonna take the dictionary and paste it here. I can say just get all the keys. Now if I'm gonna go to Revit, click on this copy views filters, giving us this menu with all the views that have all the filters. But if you look closely, this is absolute mess. There is nothing structured and it's just randomly given views with different names. Before going any further, let's come in here and actually sort it. I'm gonna write sorted. And in this case, the keys is not necessary because the sorted is gonna return us a list. So we're gonna come in here, click on it again. And now it's much better because at least you can see that there is some structure going on in your project. Let's select section 80, click on select and tells us that selected source view is section 80. But it returns it as a string, notice that. So now we need to turn it into a view. I'm gonna say source view equals, we're gonna take dictionary of views with filters. We're gonna provide the name of the filter. Now we can also add another check to make sure that we have selected something. We're gonna place this variable here. And it's gonna ensure source view is selected. And we can change the message. So now it means that if I'm gonna come in here, click on the button, then I'm not gonna select anything and click on here. Instead of an error, we actually see that no source view or view template was selected, please try again. So the next step is we need to get all the filters from our source view, and then we're gonna let user to select which filters to copy. So we're gonna say filters equals source view. Now we need to figure out how do we get filters out of our view. And if you remember earlier, we had a look in Revit API documentation and we found this method which gets filters from our views. So let's just use it here, and this time we're gonna actually print and have a look what we're actually getting out of it. Click on it, select some view, and you can see that it returns us a list of element IDs, which means that we need to convert it to an actual element. If you don't know how to get your elements, in Revit API documentation you can write get element, and this is widely used method to get your elements. We're just gonna provide element ID into this method, and it comes from document class. So we would need to write doc get element then provide element id right here let's just correct it to say filter ids now i'm going to create filters with list comprehension i'm going to take this line i'm going to provide filter id i'm going to take for filter id and filter ids and once again this is just a very simple list comprehension it's going to be the same as if you would make an empty list and i say for filter id in filter ids then we would get our filter and lastly, I would append this filter to our container of filters. These two lines give you exactly the same result. This one is one-liner and it's much easier to read it than these four lines. Then the next, I'm gonna make a dictionary of filters. Then I'm gonna get filter name and filter for filter in all filters. Then we can copy this part where we're actually selecting some element. We wanna get all sorted filters. Let's say select filters, copy. And lastly, we're gonna make sure that something is selected. Rename it to selected filters. Then make sure that we have selected some filters. All filters were selected. Please try again. Then let's convert it to our filters to copy. I'm gonna say dictionary of filters, filter name. Then we need to write for filter name in selected filters. Because this is gonna return us a list of selected elements. Now let's print our filters to copy. And let's also print the selected filters so we can see the difference. I'm gonna come in here, first it's asking us for the source view, I'm gonna select a random one, then give us the second menu saying that select our filters. I can click check all, select filters to copy, this is the first list, just the names of the elements, and the second list is an actual element object. So far it's going good, 
So I'm pretty sure that this is supposed to have some title. Just write the same select filters to copy and I'm gonna try it again. You can see that right here it says user input because we haven't provided it for source view. And now here it says select filters to copy. It gets a little bit more clear what user is supposed to do. Let's cancel it. I'm gonna place the same title here. I'm gonna give the same message as the button. So the next step is to select destination views. And if we're gonna go up, right here we have filtered all the views with filters. But for destination views, I actually want to provide all the views. So the user can also select views and view templates, which don't have any filters applied to them yet. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna write dictionary all views equals view name view of view in all views. Now I can copy the same part right here. That's gonna be selected destination views. Select destination views of view templates. Let's put the same message here. I want to make sure that multi-select is set to true. Oh, and don't forget to change the source of your selection. Then we're making sure that we have some destination views selected. And lastly, we need to say our destination views equal to, I'm gonna write dict all views view name of view name in selected destination views. Okay, same as before. Let's make sure that we are getting something. I'm clicking on the button, first to the source view, then select our filters. And lastly, it says select destination views or view templates. I just select a few here. I'm gonna select some 3D views. I'm gonna click on select. Here's the first list of the view names and then the list of actual elements. This is good. And now the final step. So now we got all the input from our users and we just need to copy selected filters to destination views. First, we need to get current filter overrides. And then we need to find a way to apply this filter. And optionally, we can also introduce an override toggle so we can decide whether we want to override if the filter already exists or we just want to skip it and do nothing. Let's go to Revit API documentation and have a look. I'm going to go to view class then I'm going to come to members. I'm going to write here filter. Then let's just scroll through and see what can we do. There's a method called get filter overrides and this gets graphic overrides that the filter applies to view. I'm going to open it in a new tab and let's keep scrolling. And this is the one that I'm looking for. So it sets overrides associated with the filter. Let's open that one as well. So the first one is get filter overrides. As you can see, it takes one argument, which is filter element ID. So let's copy that part. So now let's create our loop for destination views and filters. So we have some structure of view filter, filters to copy. Then we can get our filter overrides. In this case, we want to use the source view, then paste what we copied. It's going to say get filter overrides. Make sure you remove this element ID and we need to make sure that we are using filter ID. Now I can say for view in destination views and we want to take this filter and filter overrides and bring it to this view. To do this, we're gonna come back to Revit API. I look at the second method that we found, set filter overrides. It's gonna set override associated with the filter. Also in here it says that if filter is not currently applied to the view, this will add the filter with the assignment overrides. This is why we don't need to use the method add filters first. Let's copy this part. I'm gonna paste it here as an example. And now we can say view. First we need the name of the method. Then the argument is filter element ID. Which is gonna be this view filter ID. Then we need to get our override graphic settings. Which are gonna be this filter overrides we're getting from here. Since we're trying to make a changes to our model, we need to introduce a transaction. All the changes have to be in between these two statements. Now, I think I haven't forgotten anything. So let's go to Revit and actually have a look. I'm going to try to copy all the filters from this view and bring it to view A. So this one is view with filters, select source view. I'm gonna select all the filters. And now we want to bring it to view A. I'm gonna copy it. And you can see it has copied all the filters here as well. So I open it, I have all my graphic overrides and it's working. And that's it for this video. Sorry, but I decided to cut another part of this video because otherwise it would get too long and boring. I'll keep all the code in EF Tutor so we can open and see what else has changed. Because I had some issues because we can have the same view name for floor plans and ceiling plans and in our dictionary that would get overridden. Thank you for watching this far and thanks to all my supporters and patrons on Coffee platform which you can see right here. I really appreciate you guys. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this where I create certain tools or I should stick to more general topics. And I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding!